Hi, good morning. Happy Thursday. This is our plant of the week edition here at Rogers Gardens on Thursdays. And we are officially in hummingbird summer. Uh, and every Thursday I'm bringing to you a different hummingbird plant. Uh, so I am Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens and let's get into it. So in front of me, you see that I have kufia. There's a lot, a lot of different kinds of kufia. Uh, little pink ones, little white ones, little purple and pink ones, purple and white ones, all kinds of things. And then there's all these beautiful orange ones. So specifically, I wanna to talk to you about these orange ones um, that we have here right now. The hummingbirds and the bees, uh, I have a little bee right next to me right now, go absolutely bonkers for these. They love these. And if you want to introduce something to your yard that's going to attract hummingbirds, uh, but you're not necessarily a great gardener, maybe you're new to this, maybe uh, you've never really been successful before, uh, you feel like you don't have a green thumb, this is a good starter plant for you. Uh, these are very, very easy. Uh, they want full sun, but they'll even hand handle some like partial shade. So if you can give them at least I would say to make them look the best, 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 give them uh, five hours of direct sunlight, they'll be really, really happy. And they're really kind of no must, no fuss kind of plant. They don't do anything crazy. They don't get really, really, really tall. Uh, they don't get really, really long and out of control and you gotta cut them back once a year and do all this special stuff to them. Uh, they don't get a lot of pests and a lot of like mildew problems and things like that. I mean, we have plants that we all love, roses. Uh, they get a lot of uh, mildew problems and things like that because we're so coastal, but these don't. These are super, 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 super easy. So these are kufia, and there's a lot of different kinds of kufia. So I'm gonna go over the ones that I have in front of me here, uh, talk a little bit about the different size and stuff like that. Uh, but the, this big one I have in front of me, this one is Vermillionaire. So Vermillionaire is absolutely beautiful. I love how compact this one is. This is in this gorgeous cachet pot. So this is kind of like a nice pot where you just buy it, you pull the stickers off it, you throw it on your patio, you're done. You don't have to put it into anything. You don't have to replant it into anything. You can, uh, but it's kind of nice because it's sort of just ready to go uh, in this pot just like this. Um, and absolutely all the hummingbirds and all the bees, um, even the butterflies really like to go for these. And when you look at the little flowers, they're so kind of cool. They call them a lot of different things, firecracker flower, a cigar flower. Uh, there's even one that they call monkey face. There's a um, one that almost looks like it has like little ears, uh, but they all have these long tubes um, and in these orange variety types and um, they all have like almost a little bit of purple in them. When you look inside them, you can see that little bit of purple in them, but the hummingbirds go bonkers for these. We even have one. This one is one of my favorites. This one's actually called hummingbird lunch, <laughs> which I think is such a great name. So this is the hummingbird lunch variety. Uh, this one is a little bit more traily. So what's really nice about this one is if you want to make a pot with multiple hummingbird plants in it. So say you want to do a beautiful salvia that's nice and tall in the middle. This one kind of gives you a little bit of that trailing kind of vibe. Uh, this one's definitely going to be more round and bushy, uh, but this one gives you a little bit more trailing. So good under planting to taller, more linear plants pairs really beautifully with like blues and stuff and purples uh, because of the color combination on this. But again, same thing, low water, uh, full to partial sun. I feel like they all look their very best, best and fullest and full sun. So if you can give it eight hours and look, the little bees are just like, why are you moving it around? <laughs> but yeah, this is such a beautiful, great flower, uh, cigar flower, they also call it. But um, hummingbird lunch, when you look at the little tag, it's got it on there, but you're looking for the kufias. Uh, so this one's about uh, a foot to two feet tall, but definitely wider. Whereas this one tends to be more of that mounding habit. Uh, but I just love the habit of this and I really, really like it in containers as well because I think it's so pretty with that little bit of that spilling effect uh, to it. And you know, that is our formula for all of our plants uh, and all the pots that we do here. We have the thriller, the filler and the spiller. So this one works good for both. It works good for the spiller and for the filler. So if you get that little bit of fill that you need into a pot, this one's absolutely great. The hummingbirds are buzzing us now. Um, he's like, that's my lunch. What are you doing? Uh, and then this guy here, this one's called Honey Bells. So this is a little bit more tiny, a little bit more petite, a uh, cute little petite flower to it. This one has the ears. So when you look at it, and I wonder if maybe we can get a close up of it. Uh, this one ha looks like a little kind of cat face. It totally cracks me up. So when you look at the flowers, you'll see what I'm talking about. 
but it like literally has like little ears to the top of it, which I think is so funny. Uh, so the Honey Bells is a little bit more of a tight kind of compact variety uh, that's really cute. Uh, also good in a pot as well. All these will be great in pots if you want to put them in pots, but uh, good is like cute little fillers underneath your taller shrubbery and things like that to add a little bit of that kind of color and pizzazz. Um, they're perennial plants too. Uh, so, but I do call them like tender perennials. I do find over time, they probably need to replace, be replaced every now and then, um, or like just a good big cutback. You do not need to do that yearly, however. It's not something that you have to cut back yearly all the time. Um, they'll just kind of go through a little bit of a funky phase in the winter time, uh, but not too bad. This is a good plant, like I said, if you don't do plants, if you're new into the plant world, if you're like, okay, I wanna like kind of dip my toe into the, the plant world and, and bring a little bit more of the hummingbirds and butterflies and bees and stuff to my garden, this is a really good one to start with because it's very, very simple. Once this is established, ooh, there they go, they were literally chasing each other. Um, once they're established, uh, they're very low water too, which is great, so a very water-wise plant. Uh, they want good drainage, uh, but uh, they don't need a ton of water. So once you get them nicely established, water them a little bit more in the beginning. Uh, and the reason you're doing that is you're trying to get water penetrated into the original root ball that it has, but you also wanna get water just past that root ball. So that forces those roots to break out of that little structure they were in when you first put them in the garden and go into the surrounding soil. Once they start doing that and those roots get deeper and deeper, if you <laughs> watched, oh goodness. Um, if you, they're really, okay. <laughs> if, you, if you watch my video about uh, how to water, you'll know that uh, watering uh, low and deep is good because you want those roots that are really going down low uh, to search for that water and the water will stay down lower than up on the surface level. Uh, so that's how you get those plants nice and established. I'm distracted, that was really funny. Um, so uh, when it comes to fertilizing, the rose and flower mix is perfect, super simple. Uh, I always like to keep it easy. So this is something that you just throw on top. Uh, when you first plant your plant, it's always good to throw a big handful of this into there or the other one we have called BioLive. I should have brought a box of that, but it's got a carrot on it. Um, the BioLive is nice because it adds the mycorrhizae into the soil and when you're first planting a plant it's really great to throw a handful of that into the hole you want that um, fertilizer to actually make contact with the root ball um, and it's something to always use when you first start planting something um, and then with this this one's just a side dress you could if you only have this one you can throw it into the hole as well uh, but then just side dress it like once a month is fine uh, even every other month would be fine these are not particularly heavy feeders however I do feed most of my garden once a month so everything's kind of uh, in the habit of that uh, and the garden's really lush and full because of that but it is not something that you have to be super uber consistent with because it is not one uh, that really is a super heavy feeder particularly um, so great in pots great in the ground full sun partial shade um, not a big heavy feeder not a lot of pest problems you might get an occasional aphid here or there things like that but if you're keeping your plant happy and healthy uh, it's not gonna have a lot of bug issues when people bring all these plants into me and they're just like loaded with aphids or some kind of mildew or something like that it's because probably inconsistent watering poor feeding poor you know it's just like people plants are just like people if we eat bad and we're going to get fast food all the time and not drinking enough water not getting enough sleep when we get sick we get it bad plants are just like that so if you keep them healthy uh, they're able to fight things off and they're not going to have as many issues like that um, so yeah definitely take a look at the little um, uh, flowers on them especially the little honey bell with the cute little ears it's so adorable uh, but they're so pretty they're so easy they're so fun we are totally live too so I can answer any of your questions that you might have for us it could be hummingbird questions as well uh, we have a lot of beautiful hummingbird feeders here uh, and a lot of different beautiful hummingbird plants going on right now we have a really great um, food that we have for the hummingbirds too that's a really balanced thing so a lot of people just mix sugar and water together but that's not giving the hummingbirds completely everything they need obviously uh, plants do not make cane sugar uh, so uh, this is a fertilizer that's a lot more well-rounded uh, but I only suggest if you have feeders up in your garden and you don't have plants definitely give them some plants too you want to kind of give them that hummingbird buffet you want them to have all the things available to them so if you do do the 
the um, feeders definitely have something simple like this. And like I said, this one and the cache pot, and we have a couple of different varieties in the cache pot, not just this one. This was just my favorite. Uh, you just buy it, throw it underneath your hummingbird feeder, done. It's in a nice looking pot. It's really pretty. You don't have to do too much to it or give it as a gift. Uh, as well, we have these really pretty hummingbird um, feeders that actually poke into uh, the pots and stuff. So if you want to give this to somebody who has, you know, a summer birthday and then put something like this in there, how cute is that? What a great gift this is. You got the hummingbird feeder, you got the beautiful plant and all the things that you need uh, in there to attract all those hummingbirds so you can get attacked like I just did a second ago. <laughs> so any questions? Do we have anything going on? Yes. Um, are there, do they come in other colors? They do. So um, the long tubular ones like this mostly come in the orange colors, uh, but they do come in like a purpley pink kind of almost like magenta color um, in that tubular flower. Um, I just don't have any of those uh, available to show you right now, but we do occasionally get those. There's another one too that they call like bat face kufia that definitely has the weird ruffly ears. Definitely looks like that bat that you always see that you're like, wow, what a weird looking face that bat has. Uh, there is one like that that's like a more of a purple red color as well. Sometimes we even get them in four inch plants. So they're starting to roll in now. So we'll get some more of those in. There's also the kufia that's like the false heather type kufia uh, that you'll see um, planted around a lot. Again, it's a really good starter plant. Uh, comes in pink and white. Not necessarily a huge uh, hummingbird attractor, but they still definitely will come to them. I mean, they'll come to anything. I just was watching the hummingbirds on the dahlias down there and you wouldn't necessarily look at that big beautiful dahlia and think that is attracting hummingbirds but they like a variety of stuff so they were even down at the dahlias kind of buzzing around this morning so uh, that one will work for them too and we do have those uh, in the nursery pretty consistently it just at the moment I just had these varieties and there was a couple of other different ones but they're all in this orange coloration and this table's kind of small <laughs> so you get these three but yes they do come in different colors but mostly pinks uh, purples, reds, and the orange and yellow colors. Sorry. Um, can they withstand cold or strong winds? Uh, strong winds they should be fine in, absolutely, because they are small and compact and they're not particularly brittle. Uh, whereas things like some salvias and stuff that get a little woody uh, would have a little bit more of an issue like that. Um, with colds, not necessarily freezing temperatures, if you can keep them um, protected against like freezing. So if you were putting them out someplace like in the desert, for example, and then we do, you know, in the desert, you get some freezes out there occasionally, uh, just like everything else you have in your garden that you're probably gonna have to take care of. Uh, make sure that you're keeping them protected from that. Uh, so they don't uh, have too much of an issue with that. But winds is actually, they're pretty good against that kind of stuff. Uh, these even do really well, uh, pretty co close to the beach. A lot of people who, uh, you know, live in areas where, you know, you've got a dock in your garden uh, and you're really, really coastal to the ocean. Uh, these do really well in that kind of situation too, which is pretty nice. So they're pretty versatile. Like I said, they're, they're one of those plants that if you've got a weird situation, if you've never really found the like magic thing that works there, probably a kufia. Kufias are super easy, take a lot of different things, just not full shade uh, and not super wet. They do not want to stay super wet. They are much more of a um, uh, water-wise plant. Uh, so just be aware of that part. How do I get hummingbirds to go to my hummingbird feeder? So it takes a bit. So when you first put a feeder up, it takes a little bit. They're going to have to become aware of your garden. So you got to make sure with your hummingbird feeder uh, that you're keeping your nectar changed out, especially when it's really warm, uh, that you're keeping that really nice and clean and changed out. Uh, and that if you're cleaning it, you're cleaning it with uh, really hot water with a touch of soap and that when you are done cleaning them, that there is no soap residue left in there. Um, and that you're using a good quality uh, hummingbird nectar. Uh, do not use things like Kool-Aid or anything with a dye in it. Uh, I even had someone come to me once and they're like, oh, I'm giving them coconut sugar because it's more natural. And I'm like, no, not good. Hummingbirds do not drink coconut sugar. Uh, straight white, uh, nothing crazy, uh, no brown.
brown sugar or anything like that. Uh, you just want straight white, that refined, super bad for us sugar is what the hummingbirds are going to want if you're making it on your own. Uh, if you're buying the mixes, that's much better. But bringing in plants, that is really the key thing. Just having hummingbird feeders around uh, is not necessarily going to be enough to get them uh, to you right away. Having plants will definitely help. Uh, they do like the color red, but they like all different kinds of colors. They're very attracted to colors in general, like they go crazy for the blue. Uh, so you do not need to add red into your hummingbird nectar, uh, but having something like this, and I wanna tilt it without breaking this piece because it's glass, uh, this has that nice little red flower, so that definitely attracts them. Um, and all the kind of shiny, they're, they're much like people. They want shiny and pretty and attractive. Uh, so all of our hummingbird feeders, we have all the different ones hanging behind me. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Um, but they all have the little red glass pieces, nice and shiny and glitty. Um, definitely much better to go for glass than plastic, uh, just because of all the different bad things that we have in plastics. We just gotta be really careful with the hummingbirds that we are giving them the right thing and we're not feeding them the wrong thing. It's just like, you know, ducks in the park. They'll eat bread, but they're not supposed to. So <laughs> you don't wanna go giving them the things that we're not supposed to give them because we look at them and go, oh, they're eating it. Yeah, we also eat like really bad stuff for ourselves all the time too, but you're really not supposed to do that. So um, making sure that we're just keeping a lot of plants and having multiple feeders. As you can see, the hummingbirds can be very aggressive with each other. They're very territorial. Uh, they'll chase each other around the nurseries all the time. Uh, so having multiple feeders is good too. So then that way they're not uh, fighting and arguing with each other too much. Although it's very fun to watch them do that sometimes. <laughs> we call them the chihuahuas of the hummingbird uh, world because they're just like so tiny and so aggressive and so funny and so crazy. So it's really fun. If you want to come in and see the birds, I suggest morning time is always really the the best because that's when the most activity is happening here um, in the nursery and there's a lot of activity going on in the nursery. Do we have any more questions? Yeah. Yes. How many hours of sun do they need? So really you want to give them at least five, six hours uh, would be the very least amount. If you're giving them afternoon hours, more ideal uh, than morning hours because the afternoon hours are more intense, and more warm and more hot. Uh, these like to be kind of warm and hot. Uh, they're not really looking for like cool kind of uh, positions, but if it's morning sun that works too. The more sun you give them, the more full they're going to be, especially like when you look at these like really nice compact vermillionaire, and I gotta be careful touching these because the bees are all over them. Um, but you wanna really make sure uh, that they're um, getting at least five or six hours, afternoon hours are good. I'm always telling you like don't plant things up against uh, like hot walls and things like that. However, these guys can take that. So these are the ones that could kind of take those weird oddball situations. So uh, just not cold, dark, damp situations. So as long as you're staying away from that and going anywhere in the other direction, they're gonna absolutely be super happy. What was the fertilizer that you recommend for oh, these? Oh yeah, so the rose and flower fertilizer. So this is what you should be using on them um, after you have them planted. So the Down to Earth Rose and Flower, I talk about this brand all the time. This is my all time favorite brand. I use so many different uh, fertilizers from them, from their, uh, their acid fertilizer, their stuff for citrus because they make a lot of really great blends. So you don't have to go and be some kind of mad scientist to make up your own blend of fertilizer. Uh, these are really great. Like this one, for example, fish bone meal, blood meal, uh, alfalfa meal, seabird guano, rock phosphate, kelp meal, and lagburnine, I don't know how to say that one. <laughs> but uh, all organic stuff, really, really great. Also has humic acids and all those kind of stuff in there too. Uh, so it's made of all the good stuff uh, for the plants and uh, for the garden so you don't have to worry about it. Nothing synthetic, nothing uh, crazy, no weird blue crystals in this when you open it up. Um, but the other thing that I really like, and I should have got a box, but I will put it in the description down below, is the BioLive. When you're planting anything, Down to Earth makes a really great BioLive um, soil, or sorry, fertilizer, which has all the stuff in there to um, incorporate, to bring in that mycorrhizae and incorporate that into the garden. And that's when you first plant something, you wanna put a little handful of that in the bottom of the hole, and that will really help your plants get established. You wanna make contact with the roots on that guy. Uh, so I'll link that down below too, but this one is great. I have this one all the time, all the time. Uh, because so many of my different plants, my roses, my salvias, all that really, really love this. So this is almost kind of like a great all-purpose one, even 
I even give this to my tomatoes occasionally when I'm really trying to force more flowers um, on them. So this is a really great one. Down to Earth is a fantastic company, a uh, really great quality fertilizer. We carry it in like large boxes and gigantic bags. I'm actually the one person who's buying the 50 pound bag because I have such a big garden and I just buy it once, throw it in my shed, I don't have to worry about it. So super great soil, uh, or sorry, fertilizer, one of my favorites. So yeah, and then I think we'll just end for the questions for now. If you stumbled into this later and it's not live any longer, go ahead and put your questions down below if you still have any. Um, and then tag all your friends down below that are those hummingbird junkies. We know all those people who are so into hummingbirds. So uh, let them know what's going on and all the great stuff that we have here. We will have the Audubon Society, the local chapter, Sea and Sage here. Uh, they will be here on July 16th. Um, and they'll be here um, answering all of your questions for you. Uh, they have all kinds of really great photos and stuff of all the different kinds of hummingbirds and kind of can help you even determine what kind of hummingbird you have in your garden. Uh, they're really, really knowledgeable. And we are doing um, an optional donation for them so you can round up your purchase and we will donate that money to uh, the Sea and Sage Audubon Society. They do a lot of great things for conservation and things like that. Uh, great educational programs. They do a fantastic summer camp that my daughter went to a couple years ago. Uh, so it's really, really fun. And Rogers Gardens will match your donation, which is really fantastic. So it's not just the money that you're giving them, we'll actually donate uh, and match that donation. So um, at the end of the year, last year, we donated a, a nice chunk to them. So uh, that's really kind of a nice, exciting thing to know that we will match penny per penny your donation as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure that you sign up for our email list and then check out our YouTube page. Tons of great videos there, all different kinds of stuff. Uh, we'll send videos too if you are signed up for our uh, um, email list and you'll know about all the really fun things we have going on here father's day coming up uh too so we have all really kinds of great father's day gifts uh to uh give your dads for uh this father's day uh so thank you so much i really appreciate you all uh come in say hi check out the hummingbirds enjoy all the activity we have going on here and be well and be safe and happy gardening bye